What's going on guys? Welcome back to another update for the week. I just got back from a long Mother's Day weekend out of town. Um, and yeah, this is, this is basically three days without seeing this tank. It's just been running. There's no leak. Checked again. Uh, I did not have the gyros on just because I didn't have the settings I want um, dialed in place. Um, but you can see we have a lot of algae in just three days, right? That's crazy, right? Last week you guys saw this just kind of clean. And now I have these set to kind of um, the schedule that it's going to be running. Obviously, there's nothing in here other than just some of these plants. And we have a lot more light um, that's being produced. And so that's why we're seeing a little bit of algae. I'm probably going to dial it down a little bit um, uh, just until we get some stuff in here. Um, but let's take a look at the sump. The sump is low. It's way below the blue line. I actually filled it up maybe to here ish before I left for three days. It's not too bad. Uh, everything else looks like it is uh, doing its thing. So let's go ahead and first top off the pump so that it's not doing this air bowl. Let's also test the ammonia real quick. See where we're at on the cycle. All right, so it looks like the ammonia has come down a lot. We're at maybe one um, ppm. We were at like eight to four, so we're getting there really close. Maybe a couple more days here once we kind of get that confirmation in terms of the ammonia being low. Um, and then the first thing we'll probably add is um, some snails, just because one, we already have some algae and we can start eating some of that. Um, and then we're pretty much going to start introducing either coral or some sort of livestock into the tank so that we can kind of get the bio load, you know, kind of established and growing. All right, so today we have a par meter. We're going to measure some of the light intensity. So I'm gonna make some adjustments on the light. Um, on the bottom, I want to around like maybe 70 to 90 ish uh, par down here, and then on the rock itself, maybe mid tier, we're aiming for maybe like 150 to 180 ish, and maybe at the very higher areas up here, at the very top, maybe 250 to maybe 300 is the goal. So let's take a look at some of this measurement here. So we have maybe around 150 ish right up here. I'm getting closer to 280 to 270 over here, around 300 ish. Hold on. We're getting some inaccurate measurements because of the flow. So let me go ahead and turn off the water flow real quick. So I went ahead and turn off the, the pumps um, to get a better accurate uh, measurement here. So let's go ahead and take a look again. So we're at like 270. Um, on top there, probably a little bit higher, 300, which is perfect. Down here is like 150-ish, and then bottom here, getting about maybe 120, which is a little bit high. Let's take a look here, about 100. Uh, we'll measure some other spots around here. This is about 250, 260, this is three. 30 at the very top. So it looks like I might dial it back just a tad so that the bottom stuff here doesn't fry. So that's like my mushrooms and, and, and whatnot. I don't want it to, to, to be too high. Right below it is about like 140-ish. And obviously the sensor is a little bit higher too. So um, I'll probably read like slightly lower yeah, about like 120-ish is what we're getting here. So, um, I don't have the lights on the other ends, but I'm going to guess it's going to be about the same. So let me go ahead and make some small adjustments and see if we can kind of get this dialed in. All right, so I was able to adjust the uh, LEDs by like just 2%, so it's down to like 55% now. Uh, I believe outside it was running around like 45%. Um, of course, the, the, the level and the height of the tank outside on a 33 gallon long is shorter. Um, so this one is taller, so of course it's gonna be using a little bit more energy. But it's not too bad, we saved 2% there in terms of light. The top par is still around like 250. The bottom is around 100. Um, and the certain areas were a little like 100, like 90-ish, so it's not too bad. Um, I was trying to aim for maybe like 75 to like 90-ish. 90 is on the higher end, and it's not too terrible there. Down here, I measured the par for uh, some of the macroalgae. It's getting very, very like low par reading, even at um, 
uh, one, we have a cover on top, so it kind of reduces that. And two, these Kessels are, you know, they're, they're good lights for, you know, generic stuff, but I've noticed that they don't really grow corals as well. Just, they're just, you know, not as strong. Uh, for example, like this right here, uh, the par down there is around like 50-ish, maybe like 60 when it hits uh, the basket. So, I mean, that basket's only like about maybe eight inches deep. And then, you know, obviously the sun goes down more and I want to grow like some other stuff. I guess the mushrooms and stuff could be okay, but I also want to have some nems in here as well. And they need a little bit higher um, par there. So I'll probably end up getting a different light for this and just kind of... Uh, selling these two. All right, so here is the ammonia test. The one on the left here, and this one right here, is the latest one, and the one on the right was yesterday's. Uh, we were at 0.25, which was the right one yesterday, and as, as of today, we are at zero ammonia. So that means the tank is cycled. We are fully cycled. All the other parameters are looking good. So. Um, as you can see, we still have a little bit of thin algae or thin film on the tank. So what I did was, um, especially because this tank is also a brand new tank, it's been sitting in probably a warehouse or something like that. There's probably a bunch of junk um, in the tank um, that came in the tank. I dropped a bag of, it's right here, sitting right here for now, of carbon. I took off the filter socks and just let, let it sit here. The reason why I'm letting it sit here is because a lot of the pods were caught up in this mesh i'll let them kind of climb out uh, in the next couple days and once they're kind of out i will rinse this and then we'll put like just like a sponge uh, foam pad or something on here to kind of reduce the noise um, and then also you know let the paws kind of pass through because it's the uh, the size is gonna be big enough for them to pass through uh, but yeah so we are cycled so i also added in another algae yeah, to the dragon's rough algae over there. Um, we're gonna let that grow. Uh, the other thing that I was messing around with, so I'll probably add in snails for now and probably just maybe a pair of clownfish down here uh, and not up top. The reason why I don't wanna add them up top yet is because I don't really have a cover and I don't want them to jump in suicide. Uh, I'm gonna wait until the lids come in. I did order some lids and I'll, I'll do that in the video once I kind of get the lids, but uh, yeah, we'll wait for the lids to come in and then we'll just add them down here And then I'll, I will start adding in corals into the tank here Maybe it's just some mushrooms just to see how they react to the new tank and the new parameters um, And we'll kind of take things slow guys. Well, there it is. This is the very first stock in this giant tank Look how small he is and how cool the snail is. I had a snail in here. He'll kind of take care of like, you know like the little algae on the walls here and there. We'll put one in the sump as well let them Kind of just browse, and as more algae grow uh, in the tank, we'll add in more and more snails. Uh, but yeah, we'll start with those guys, and we'll add in the clowns next. I just didn't want to carry, you know, so much bristle worm into here. Eventually, I'm pretty sure we'll get bristle worms in here as well. We'll go ahead and and just make sure it's kind of somewhat clean. So that's why the mushrooms are retracted. Uh, we'll just kind of let them settle there for a little bit. I went and got a temporary lid. So this is just from Home Depot. I still need to trim this. I'm gonna trim this in a little bit here. Um, but it's just 20 bucks, temporary lid. You can actually use it as a permanent lid, but I went, um, you know, so that, <clears throat> uh, it's actually a pretty good permanent lid if you wanna use that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and trim it, use it until, you know, the actual lid comes in and we'll replace it. But um, this is actually a, a eight foot lid that it comes in and this is a six foot tank so I'll head and trim two foot of this off. All right so I trimmed off the lid here not the best trim that I've done as you can see here kind of a hack job but it is what it is it's only temporary so it's not terrible. Um, again this is going to be the lid for now and it's actually already look at that look all this water like, splashing like I was saying get a lot of splashes uh, in this tank so it's all gonna hopefully come back down reduce the uh, evaporation in the tank as well all right so a few other things that I did was uh, got this piece in that was replaced by water box uh, I cracked that because I over tighten it so if you guys do have one of these guys these are plastic and they're super fragile so you'll crack it if you over tighten it replace that so that's fixed finally 
And then I got a, the pad that I was talking about here. Um, I got it in not too long ago. Um, I placed it across. <laughs> it actually makes a hole over there because that, that's where all the water is rushing through. But um, it was a two inch pad and I ended up cutting it in half and just putting it in there for now. Uh, we'll see what I want to do with that. It's, it definitely silences the uh, overflow there like tremendously. Like it, it cuts it down by like almost like 90%. You can't even hear anything now. Uh, so that's great. We'll keep it like that for sure. I'm not sure if I want to remove this part here and just have it like resting down there. Um, but we'll see. We'll probably just keep that just so that it has some sort of form or st stability there. Yo, Tang is still hiding back there. It's just kind of picking a spot in the back there and just hiding just because look at this. This tank is ginormic, right? And he's just in here by himself, he or she. It's been like an hour or so. Mushrooms are starting to open up a little bit. Uh, not too much, but we'll kind of see what that looks like maybe tomorrow. So snail made its way over here to the corner over there. I added one more snail over here. It's down there. Kind of see it like above the water there. Kind of roaming. So we have two snails. Well, kind of add in, you know, one or two snails every day uh, slowly because we have a lot outside too, but we still need the, the snails out there to kind of keep the, the tanks clean. So we'll kind of figure out a balanced number. So I got the schedule down that I like, but now I can't like once. Okay, so let me let me tell you guys this. So I got the regular gyre a long time ago. It doesn't come with like any online app support, right? So I bought this guy, right, to hook it online, so that we can you know do this thing online and on the app. So it's on here. It auto logs you on. This app literally is the, the worst app. Like the the product is great, but like this app just destroys like whatever product they, they, they give to us here. So it's already paired here, right? And if you look here, that's a, that's a setting that's on that I had program on. But like if you pull the plug out of the wall, this thing, like it loses like the program altogether. But now I ran into another issue where I can't even get to the program. This is how bad this is. So it's paired already. It's, let me see the little Wi-Fi guy there. So it's paired. Click on here to try to get to here, right? And as you get into here, a couple of seconds later, boom, it like unpairs you. And then like it asks you to repair a device when, when you've already paired this device and saying like, oh, connected to the like, connection. It's, it's so broken. And then when I try to go to like a different like menu, it literally auto logs you off and it says um, some error code where it says like it's not on. And then like when I try to put in like my user back in here to log in, it won't log back in. Like I have to like close out of this app. I can't even, I can't even change the settings on this anymore. Anyways, I figured out the settings that I want. It's on here, right? And the other thing is like the time is like, so weird like one one time was updated one time it wasn't well anyway so i got at least i got the settings dialed in i don't think i can even ever change it again until they fix this app contact the custom support to see if they can actually fix this app because like i can't even access this and then the thing is i can't even unpair this device with the account that's on here if i ever wanted to sell this like i can't because it's like paired to like my account like i can't even undo it anyways it's broken it's like messed up so if you guys have a similar problem like this, if your max spec um, gyres or even your lights, you know, leave them in the comments below because this thing is really annoying. Anyway, so at least that's dialed in. I have it in pretty low settings um, and throughout the night and whatnot. So at least we'll kind of keep that. I, if I want to make any adju other adjustments, I have to figure out how to reprogram it either manually because you can manually do it on there, but I don't want to deal with that because it was like, too much like button pressing and whatnot, but I might have to do that if I want to change stuff, but. All right, so I was measuring the PAR the other day on the main display tank. I went down here to measure PAR um, on, on these LEDs as well. And they weren't cutting it for me at the max intensity here um, from here to here, not even like the full bottom here. I was getting about like 50, 60 PAR. I want to try and get a little bit higher, maybe closer to like 100-ish. So. Uh, I was looking for um, some used lights online, um, just the G4s. I had the G4s up there. Couldn't find any uh, used ones, unfortunately, so I was trying to look for some G5s. 
didn't really have any that were like, you know, decent um, pricing. So I went ahead and just bought a used um, G6, a little bit more expensive, but I also wanted to see what um, the improvements were on the G6 versus G5, because I did have a G5 a couple years ago, maybe one or two years ago. I didn't really see much of an improvement, um, but I want to see what the G6 can do. And I'll have just the one G6 down here. That'll power kind of like the whole sump here for the um, macroalgae plus some of the frags down here. Uh, also the foam here, it was actually two inches. Uh, I cut it in half just because it was kind of blocking some flow up here. I just didn't like it. Um, so I just went ahead and just cut it and yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and install these bad boys. And the one thing I don't like about the newer version is it's on Morbius. The Morbius is on the app. The app is terrible. Hopefully they improved it since I've you know last used it, but uh, I didn't really like it. Um, I like the old G4 um, where you can actually go on the desktop, make the changes on there a lot better. But we'll see. Let's go ahead and set this up. Alrighty, so I got the Radeon G6 install. I'm installing the firmware for it now. I just turned it on and it's freaking lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> In here, it's so bright. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's like on max right now or something like that. We have the snail that's chilling over there. And we have our macroalgae, so we'll wait until this updates. Firmware updated it, kind of played with some settings that just pretty much went to the settings and just maxed out all the white, uh, red, and green just because that's where the macroalgae and plants like to grow uh, with the blues and whatever. So I'm gonna just testing the par. Got my par meter here. Uh, and I want to see what the bottom of this I'm reading. So right now it's pretty low. We got 18 par, which is Kind of crazy low. See up here is like a hundred, so we're gonna make some adjustments here. Um, on the schedule, we'll do sixty percent. Okay, so now we are closer to probably like eighty. And down here, we're still pretty low. The other problem is right now, I am at the very end of the um, schedule, what it's supposed to be. Um, and so it's not as bright. Okay, so right now it's at 70, and down here it is 30. That's not terrible. I think that is going to, that's at 100%, so. So let me see here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna play through this. Kind of get an idea. Get kind of idea of what kind of power I'm reading. Okay, here we go. We're at 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 100, and it goes back down. So it looks like it goes up to 100 only, which is kind of interesting. Look at this. When it's very close up here, it's like 500. And then we pass this here. It gets reduced by like a lot. So a lot of this is getting blocked by the um, actual cover here. So what? I guess we have to run it without the cover. Um, But I need to be able to cover this side only. Um, so, so yeah. Most likely, what I'll do is I will cut a small portion of this just to cover this side here, and we'll let this this thingy be open because I can't get a good reading with this being blocked. Um, 
and it looks like it absorbs. So if you guys are looking into getting like a temporary cover, this works, but it absorbs a lot of the, the actual light or it blocks it. As you can see here, like in, here we're at like 500, I don't know, 500 like par, and then like right below it, just like the same, it drops to like 200, so it's like about half. Um, doable, but I don't want to lose that much par. So we got everything dialed in. Uh, we had a 60% right now, and we'll slowly work on the tank. Uh, but if you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. Like always, that's guys. Peace.